Okay, today I want to talk about middle school math, and I hope this will encourage you, whether you have one that enjoys doing math for the fun of it, or just really struggles and definitely does not like that letters have been added to numbers. Welcome to Learning with Boys. My name is Rachel. I am a homeschool mom of four boys. I have graduated two, and we are finishing up our 16th year of homeschooling with my sixth grader and 11th grader. So, um, getting ready to go through my fourth time of middle school, middle school math, and that's sort of the age range I wanna talk about today. I do wanna encourage you that for me, each, one of my four boys have been different in their way of learning math. My oldest liked to do math for the fun of it. My second one didn't, wasn't even sure if he'd be able to learn his multiplication tables. He did with some help and initiative from mommy. And my third one, he did okay. He sometimes for some reason it just seemed like something wouldn't sink in very well and after a day or two of just really sitting down and using some out-of-the-box explanations um, he caught on and this one same thing but usually it takes a week or two for it to really sink in so just been different math learners here but I want to share some curriculum with you that I have used from the one that loved math, wished everything was in numbers, to the one that really, really struggled, and even to the ones that, you know, are just getting by. So I'm going to share some curriculum, but I'm also going to be letting you know what we're going to be using for my seventh grader next school year. So for the one that loved everything in numbers, I want to mention it is a curriculum. We did not specifically use the curriculum, but during the seventh, probably more the eighth grade year, my son was introduced to the art of problem solving. It is a curriculum, but they also have a lot of other things on their site. Now, I don't know if they have this anymore, but you might have to do a little research on this. But he was able, through a friend that actually used the curriculum, was able to put it in an email and do some math challenges every day. Like they would have a problem that they would both have to solve and then they could discuss it through communicating on the computer. So he really enjoyed that. And it was just stuff that he had never done before, but he was determined to try to figure it out. So that is a fun place if I think they have information about math competitions and that was another place my son i think he only did like one math competition that was locally but he had heard it um, from a friend who is using this curriculum so i do want to share that with you if you have a child that really loves numbers and is very advanced because this curriculum is extremely advanced i had looked at some of the books from them but i felt like there was no way that i could be teaching it and the videos were like $400, I think. So, and that was just not within our price range at that time. So, he actually used Matthew C all the way through. Um, and he did algebra, ended up doing algebra in eighth grade with it. And then did geometry, algebra two. And then he actually did not finish up with Matthew C, but he did work through ThinkWell pre-calculus and that was his senior year he didn't even finish that program he really enjoyed it but just because of some other circumstances which was the opportunity to work full-time because he was done with everything else um, he didn't finish that but he did enjoy that particular curriculum but that was advanced I do want to say one thing about Matthew C and mainly because I am talking about the middle school years if you are new to the program not really familiar with it, but curious. It is a mastery program. So they start out early elementary, they teach you addition, one book, subtraction, another book, multiplication, division, and then fractions and decimals. And that's where my 
sixth grader is now, he's halfway through a book. So he's sort of in an odd spot. And the nice thing about Matthew C is if you're thinking about it for middle school that you could easily pick it up with pre-algebra because it's really gonna start where most pre-algebra start because it is expecting you to have already mastered all those other things. So pre-algebra is gonna start um, pretty much your basic pre-algebra and then algebra. So either one of those would be fine. I've heard of people starting there and they do great. So it can be, I mean, you possibly could start in Zeta, which is the book before pre-algebra, but I really just think it depends on the child. So um, I will be linking all these companies down below if you wanna check them out a little bit more. So that was my oldest. Now, my second one who really, really struggled, I wanna share my thoughts on him and how things went for him through the middle school years into high school. He did Matthew C all the way through also, and he really struggled. I feel like once he got the multiplication and division down, things did seem to come a little bit easier for him until we hit the pre-algebra and started introducing letters with numbers. Um, he didn't like that at all. He still jokes about it. He did try teaching textbooks. So I do want to mention that. He did try teaching textbooks for his algebra because that is supposed to work for those that struggle with math, correct? It didn't. Um, I think he does have a lot of ADHD tendencies. He didn't have a lot of patience sitting there looking at this black screen of problems um, and uh, no face computer talking to him. So it just, it didn't go well. He didn't finish it. Um, I actually counted it as a pre-algebra that year. And the next school year, he tried Saxon. And that was our first time trying Saxon math. So we used some DVDs from Art Read. The nice thing about Saxon is they have a lot of different video programs. They have the dive DVDs. Um, Art Read is more just a man with a whiteboard, which actually worked really well for him. Um, he seemed, it seemed to be processing for him. Now, I don't know if it was because he had already gone through um, over half a year of some form of algebra, but it started to sink in a little bit better. And it could just be age of maturity. I don't know. So he finished up that, but I want to tell you, we went back to geometry with Matthew C., and he did really well in it. So here we are realizing that, which I've heard, you either do really well in algebra or really well in geometry. And I always wondered why I struggled in geometry because I aced algebra in high school. So I feel like there's some truth to that. Now my oldest who did well in math, he did okay in both. I feel like he really does enjoy algebra more, but he did fine in geometry so but he is like does a lot of carpentry work and enjoys that kind of he just enjoys numbers so <laughs> maybe that's why now my third one that came along did Matthew C and we did that same year that my second tried algebra with Saxon he did I can't remember if it was the 7th 8th or the 8th 7 of Saxon with the art read DVDs and he did okay too. And the only reason I did that with him is he asked to do something different. Um, I think he was hoping it would be a little bit more independent. Matthew C is independent, but he was the one that if he got stuck, we had to spend a couple of days thinking outside the box of how to solve this and think through it. So I feel like it did help him. That was a good year for him. But we did go back to pre-algebra with Matthew C in his eighth grade year. And then we tried, since I had Saxon algebra, for his ninth grade year. But he really struggled with it that year. We ended up back with Matthew C for algebra two and geometry, which my 11th grader is finishing up this school year and acing it. He loves, he feels like this is a brief, I'm just like, you understand this? He is an doing so much better with geometry than he did with algebra. Now he didn't struggle as much as my second one, but he's just enjoying geometry a little bit more. So 
Now I have another one going into seventh grade. And prayerfully, I mean, unless the Lord really makes it clear I need to change, I'm just going to stay with Matthew C. Because I do have the time. He is my last one. Um, he could possibly start pre-algebra halfway through next school year because he's that sort of the route that he is on with his math. He's finishing books halfway through and starting another one. So, or I might just continue to review so he just can start pre-algebra in eighth. I really don't know that for sure what I will decide to do. But I just wanted to share this video with you that each child is different in the way they learn. And sometimes it may just take some patience in the curriculum you're already using. Sometimes you might need to add in something extra if it's something they really enjoy. I mean, maybe, you know, you could do the same thing with language arts and writing. If they enjoy that, you might want to add in something about writing a book. Well, the same thing for math. You might want to add in some competitions or some online things that they would enjoy. He also enjoyed like computer programming. So that might be something if they really enjoy math that they would enjoy the computer programming. So, or, you know, I have some that struggled. I just had to be patient with the one I have now. I've just learned through experience that it's best just to be patient and make sure that they have the concept down. You cannot rush math. They have to have it down to move on to the next concept. They really need to have the basics down to be able to enter pre-algebra so they can understand those concepts in algebra. But if you feel like your kid is struggling and if they are behind, just encourage them and let them review, review, review where they are struggling. Let it take a couple days. Let it take a couple weeks like it's taking with my youngest now. If they are still struggling, you may consider some tutoring or possibly trying a different curriculum. The nice thing about today is that a lot of the curriculum has free trials, so you can get a little bit of an idea. I did forget one other that I did try, and that was CLT Math, and it was really at the end of my one that, my third one, a couple, two years ago, I think, and I have videos on that. He finished up his algebra year. He didn't finish up SACS, and we switched over to CLT probably about three-fourths of the way through, and he did okay with it, and I was realizing that it was probably going past the point of stuff he needed to know from the algebra that Saxon had. He did okay, but he, he didn't want to stay with that. I think he actually wanted to go back to Matthew C. So I did want to share that thought, but I know a lot of people use that and do fine with it. So, all right, I do appreciate you watching this video. I hope it was helpful and encouraging. I am going to be sharing the rest of the curriculum that my seventh grader will be using, possibly doing some unboxing. I'm not sure I'll do that or not, but I hope you all have a wonderful week and we will talk to you again soon.